Hello friends, in this video we'll be comparing the Niche Zero with the Mazda Super Jolly. So why the Super Jolly? It's like stepping back in time. Well that's because Mazda came out with new burrs, the 233M. These are supposed to be really good burrs as compared to the traditional 033M which were more geared towards the darker roosts. I've had the Niche Zero for a while, it's an excellent grinder, there is absolutely no doubt about it. It's really brilliant for medium and the darker side of medium and dark roasts. However, I, I believe it does not do a very good job for light roasts. So I was really looking forward to trying a flat burst. Um, hence, I purchased this uh, Mother Super Jolly um, as a second hand for a fairly reasonable price. And I modified the, uh, the grinder to make it into a single loser. So let's go through this. So I've got about 15.8 grams of these lightly roasted beans, maybe more towards the medium end of normal. Let's switch this on. There is a bit of popcorning as you can see. So I've got 15.8 grams. So essentially there was almost zero retention. You do need a lot of WDT because um, with the modification, it seems to produce lots of boulders. So if you want good coffee from this grinder, you need to um, make sure that you break those boulders down. That's the coffee. It's nice and fluffy. It's really nice, really pleasant. It's got uh, a lot of sweetness and a bit of pleasant acidity. Um, there is a, a bit of flavor separation. Um, maybe not as distinct as the uh, the SSP HU burst, but uh, I think it's a it's a fine balance between a high clarity and um, a high body um, uh, espresso. And I, I I prefer this these kind of coffees. Let's try the niche next. Next we come to the niche zero. I've got fifteen point eight grams there. <laughs> That's actually 16 grams which has come out so maybe there was a bit of retention from the previous grind so but essentially you get fairly minimal retention now the new zero is is a brilliant grinder as you can see from from the workflow there is no comparison at all it's got the best workflow of any grinder that, that i know let's see what it tastes like Thank you. 
astrography. Um, a, a little bit less grammar because it's been a, a minute or so. The coffee is good. There's a lot of depth to it. However, uh, there is little separation of flavors. Unlike the Mazda Super Jolly, uh, the new birds, they are excellent. They produce a lot of clarity, not as much as the uh, the SSP birds. However, I think the, um, don't get me wrong, both of them produce absolutely delightful espressos. But my preference is for the Mazda Super Jolly, simply because um, the separation of flavors is, is more, it's not extreme, and, and this is what I like. However, when you compare workflow, uh, the niche is far superior, it's a bit slower than the Mazda, as you could see, but workflow-wise, absolutely no problems. The grinds are fluffy with the Super Jolly, you need to do WDT. If you do not spend time doing WDT, then and you're going to get a lot of channeling, a lot of spurting, and the espresso will be terrible. Um, there's a bit more work involved with the Super Jolly. However, if you are on a budget, you can get these machines for a fairly decent price. Uh, you can modify them using the Daniel Wong modification kit, which is probably about a hundred um, pounds, I think. Uh, in, and but it is a lot of work. Um, if you are not on a budget, then I would, and if you are interested in better clarity espressos, then you might uh, want to go for um, the uh, the other flatbird grinders. Um, I'm waiting for the 078S. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I've heard lots of different reviews, um, but let's see, I'm hoping to get it next week. And um, if I do get to try it, uh, then uh, hopefully I'll come out with a video in the next few weeks. Bye now.